Hi, uh, my name is Kay Savitz, K6KJN. I am talking to you from uh, Portland, Oregon, and I am here to talk to you about the Digital Library of Amateur Radio and Communications. Uh, it is a, to briefly, it is an online library uh, all about amateur radio and, and other related communications. It is free, it is available to you now, and I am working to grow it every day, and I want you to use the library and also help me build a library. That is my, uh, that is my elevator pitch <laughs> right there. So um, I will start by uh, showing you around and explaining uh, what, what we're doing. Let's see if I can share my the correct window here. Here we go. All right. Um, so this is the Digital Library of Amateur Radio and Communications, which is a website, and it is created by, uh, hosted by the Internet Archive, which I will talk about first. Um, Internet Archive is a nonprofit digital library that's been around for more than 25 years. Uh, it's best known for the Wayback Machine. A lot of people just know it as, oh, oh, it's the Wayback Machine, people. and <clears throat> um, but it does a lot more than that. It's been around for more than 25 years. And it's the mission of this nonprofit organization is universal access to all knowledge. Uh, it's, it's a library. It's entirely online. It's entirely free. Uh, there's no ads. There's no tracking, just free information. And that information includes uh, millions of books and magazines, movies, government data, uh, uh, audio from from uh, uh, music and 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 seventy eight uh, records, um, millions of of pages of of, of magazines, uh, software, that sort of thing it has everything a traditional library has. It's just entirely online. Internet Archive has more than ninety nine petabytes of data, and more than seven million books are available to read. And we scan more than 4,000 books a day across all topics, not just amateur radio. <clears throat> um, uh, my name, as I said, is Kay Savitz, and I have been a ham since 1989. Um, my dad was a ham, and now I have his call sign K6KJN uh, because he is not using it anymore. Um, and I am the curator of, of the Digital Library of Amateur Radio and Communications. Uh, this exists because of a grant um, from the, the ARDC, Amateur Radio Digital Communications, which is a uh, private foundation that funds amateur radio related projects around the world. I'm sure many of you are have heard of it already. Um, the organization gives out grants to advance amateur radio. Um, some of our grants are very small and some of them are very big. Um, and in 2022, they gave uh, 101 grants uh, totaling $8 million. Um, they are, they gave the grant to, uh, to Internet Archive in order to, to create this, this library. So um, the DLARC um, <clears throat> is that the goal was to create a, a incredible permanent open access library of ham radio and other things uh, for researchers, for students, for scholars, for radio hobbyists, for the general public, for you. And I am going to show you around. This is the kind of the, the, the front page of it. And you can kind of see some of the, the collections that I've created uh, within the the library. Uh, there's more than 65,000 things right now. Um, uh, okay, there's just a couple shy of 65,000 items right now. Um, and uh, I'm, I'm adding more every week. Uh, let me show you some of the highlights. I think the, the, the best way to kind of get a sense of what this is, is to look around. So let's do that. Um, I'll just look at some of the, the sub collections. <laughs> excuse me. Let me just do a blanket. Excuse me for all the coughing I might do in the next hour. 
Um, we have a complete library of 73 magazine. Um, every issue is here. Now, um, I will just pick a random issue and just kind of show you how it works. Um, here is the January 1994 issue, and here's the cover, and you can just turn the pages and read what is uh, is in there. Um, and it's just, it, and in the case of, of the 73 magazines, if you prefer, you can also just download it to your computer to, to view it offline. Um, you can search within the issue. I just try, I'm trying to do a full text search for, for packet radio. I have no idea if actually they talk about packet radio in this issue. Oh, look, they do. I uh, should have done it in quotes. Um, Anyway, so you see something that, that looks interesting and you can click on it, it takes you right to that page. So um, <laughs> Wayne Green, who was the, the founder and publisher of 73 Magazine, actually donated before he died the entire run of 73 Magazines to Internet Archive, which which we we scanned and, and put online. Um, so that's pretty awesome. Um, so this is one thing here. And, and then also, um, let's see, you want a couple of things you need to know <clears throat> is if you search by date published, then you it will sort it by newest first. You click a little arrow and you can see the oldest ones first. And you can search the full text of the entire collection all at, all at once. Uh, I'll search for Wing Green. <clears throat> and it will show you every issue that mentions the uh, the search term in there. So if you ever wrote for 73 or, you know, I don't know, your grandma did, um, you can search for their call sign and, and find it there. Um, so that's just one of the many publications that are available within the DLARC archive. Um, here's another one, a much earlier publication. Uh, Aviation and Wireless News is probably one of the earliest publications uh, that that uh, existed about amateur radio. Um, it was it was actually about about two things that about was about the the, the newfangled uh, topics of uh, of amateur radio and also airplanes because <laughs> this magazine was like oh, 100 years old. Uh, it started publishing in uh, 1918. And again, there you can these are the issues we have and you can you can uh, go ahead and and read them there. Of course, there's much more modern publications as well. Here is one I have picked to uh, highlight. Um, this is the uh, the repeater newsletter uh, published by uh, the Boulder, Colorado Amateur Television Club. They publish a newsletter uh, more, usually more than once a month, and they have given permission to to put uh, let us archive their newsletters as well. Um, this makes it so kind of what we're, what we're doing by putting this all in one place is, is a couple of things. Um, one is we're making it available so that you can search for amateur radio related topics. Um, in one place, you can search many, many, many publications, uh, books, uh, magazines, newsletters, that sort of thing, all in one place. And that's convenient. Um, if for a group like this uh, who are giving us permission to to uh, to share their newsletters. Um, it is uh, making it um, uh, increasing the visibility of their publication, opening it up to new audiences, and also providing a backup of of their of their content. If their website ever goes down, or the, the group any group ever uh, you know disbands or or just loses all its membership, well, this this stuff is is going to be preserved here at Internet Archive for a very long time. And while we're on the topic of uh, uh, amateur television, here's also another one, um, CQ TV magazine, which is published by the British Amateur Television Club. We have newsletters and magazines from around the world. <coughs> Excuse me. Let's see, um, keep going. Okay, so... <laughs> More than newsletters and magazines and and things like that, um, the 
I want to give an example of just something amazing. The Milwaukee, Wisconsin Radio Amateurs Club has submitted to DLARC their, uh, they've been around since what, 1917. They're one of the oldest clubs and they saved everything. I mean, these, this group saved every scrap of paper <laughs> that had to do with the club and uh, they scanned it all and they submitted it all to uh, the DLARC archive. So as you can see here, there's more than 2,600 items. So yes, they had a newsletter and stuff uh, uh, called called Chatter um, that they've published for, for many years, but also they've saved you know treasure, treasure re reports and uh, letters that they've sent and received um, on various topics, you know, going back 50, 100 years. And it's, a, it's just an amazing uh, uh, group of snapshots of, 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 of the growth of this club over time. I'll show you a couple of things. I mean, they, they uh, have sent so much, so many things. Here's one thing. Um, this is a, a letter from the ARRL to Hiram Percy Maxim. Um, uh, in uh, 1923 that they had on file. They have, oh, I love this one so much. Uh, they have the message from the AWRL uh, about the suspension of amateur radio operations for World War II. And here's like the official communique saying like, get off the air when we don't want to be, you know, uh, visible on on uh, radar and, and or radio and uh, and um, so they they have that and they also have scanned this uh, this lovely comic <laughs> I, I call this the uh, the the nothing ever changes uh, comic uh, this is from 1940 uh, newspaper uh, there's it's a comic uh, 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 called side side glances and it shows uh, two um, fancy women walking uh, out for a night on the town. They've got their furs and the hats on and things, and, and they're going into a club. And one of them says to the other, I wouldn't marry him for a million dollars. He's an amateur radio fiend and sits up all night to hear somebody tell him it's raining in Tuscaloosa. <laughs> so uh, anyway, the the, uh, the this this Milwaukee Amateur Radio Club has done an amazing job of, of, of preserving their history and then making it available online. And then as I've said before, it's all full text searchable, and uh, and so it's it's a pretty amazing collection. Continuing some of the highlights, um, Florida Skip uh, uh, was an amateur radio publication uh, started in the 1960s, published by a man named uh, Andy Clark, W4IYT. It was a regional publication about amateur radio in the state of Florida. Um, Somebody submitted a, a few scans of these, and I thought that's interesting. I've never heard of this publication, and I reached, I, I looked out for Andy Clark W four IYT, and he died a number of years ago. Um, and but I I contacted uh, his son, also named Andy Clark, also W four IYT, and um, uh, that Mr. Clark was thrilled to have his dad's uh, publication in the library and said that he had a bunch more issues in the attic. Uh, so he has sent them in to be scanned. Uh, and so soon there will be even more issues than the 74 we have now of, uh, of Florida skip. <laughs> um, so that's some of the stuff we have. And I will take a break here for a minute to show you. Uh, I have to find the link here. Um, how we scan things. So, if say you have, so uh, like I said, I want you to use the library, and I also want you to uh, to submit things if you have them. Um, say your your club that you are involved with has had a newsletter for many many years or you have personally published a, a book or a magazine or something, and you would like it online. Uh, you can send that in to, to Internet Archive. Uh, you can you know, donate it, and then we will take it and we will scan it. And this is, oops, no, I don't want Twitter notifications. Thank you. Um, this is how our scanning machine works. 
This is a not your typical, you know, off the shelf uh, 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 scanner from from Epson or something. Uh, this machine can scan a, a very thick book in a matter of a few minutes, and it's all you know run by humans and the machine, and they put their their uh, book in there and they can scan. This is how Internet Archive manages to scan four thousand books a day. Uh, so if you submit your uh, uh, donate books that 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 you have on your shelf that you are done with that you want to donate, we will scan them. We will get them online, and and I'll talk about it more. Show you our, our lending library later, but we have many 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 ham radio books available that way. So that's how we'll 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 scan uh, the 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 Florida skips and that sort of thing. We will never harm the material that that we get. Um, moving on from, from print publications, I'll show you a few other neat things. Then we'll take some questions. Um, <clears throat> so it's not just print publications. Uh, there, we have a lot of audio. In fact, here, let me, before I get to that, let me go to, um, show you the overview of the, the audio. This, so this is the, the DLARC podcast collection. And it's not just podcasts really, because we have some, a lot of audio things that are radio shows and things and that I, I shouldn't have called it podcast. Maybe I'll change it. Um, but right now we have 47 collections of audio things and podcasts. Um, in, many podcasts are here. Uh, let's see, we've got Ham Nation and Linux in the, in the Ham Shack and uh, Ham Radio Workbench and, and many currently published uh, uh, podcasts um, and audio shows are in here. Uh, solder smoke, and you know, we get permission. And they say sure, and we put them on here, and then they they are are fully uh, available for uh, as backed up and 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 archived for other people to enjoy. And there's other things such as um, the Rain Report. Hap Holly, I don't know if you know the name. He's an incredible person. He's a blind ham, and he's he started producing. Uh, this this program first it was called the RP report and then later we called it the Rain Report Radio Amateur Information Network. Uh, started at 1985 and he went through 2019, and he he created um, uh, interviews and news news uh, programs relevant to the amateur radio community. He he was just he was a machine creating just all he interviewed everyone relevant uh, in. The amateur radio community uh, talked about the, the controversies controversies of the day, um, and um, they're all here. And you can uh, look at every episode that we could find, which was about thirteen hundred episodes. Uh, and and they're all here, and it's amazing. Um, something we are working on, which should be soon. Uh, we are integrated. So basically, for for these these things, you can search these uh, and with you can search the show notes, right? And so, say you searched for you know a particular call sign or something, and it's if it's in the show notes and and Hap's show notes, for instance, are of varying quality. Some of them are very detailed, and some of them are just just the the bare bones. So that's good for now. Uh, what we're working on is using a transcription tool called Whisper AI. Uh, we're getting it integrated into the system. And soon, weeks, months, uh, we will have full transcripts of everything in here. So for instance, in these 1300 episodes of the Rain Report, uh, it won't just be an audio file with brief show notes. It will be a complete transcript. They're really good transcripts uh, that the software creates. They're not they're not always perfect, but they're a whole lot better than what we have now, which is nothing. Um, so you'll be able to full text search all of these episodes uh, of the of this uh, rain report, which is pretty amazing. Um, it's another podcast thing I wanted to show you. What was it? Um, some of the podcasts I want to, like I said, there's there's ones that are still being published, 
and we update them. There's also ham radio podcasts that don't exist anymore. Um, they stopped being published. Uh, people lose interest. People die. People uh, move on to other hobbies or or whatever. And some podcasts are you know, only published ten episodes, you know, ten years ago or something like that. Um, some only did one or two, and and I've really working hard also in addition to finding the ones that are popular and have published hundreds of episodes i'm also trying to find the the ones that are might slip through the cracks and and those are uh you know a, a podcast that only published 10 episodes 10 years ago is still a part of the conversation and is still a part of the community and that information might still have value so i'm doing everything i can to find those as well uh, and get them added uh, as well. Uh, here's another thing. This is not a podcast, but this is where I put it is, uh, Glenn Hauser's world of radio. Uh, Glenn Hauser, um, has been since 1980 creating this, this, this program, uh, about, um, uh, about shortwave radio, the world of shortwave radio and what's happening. And he also has the DX Listening Digest, which is um, more about the shortwave and DX radio. Um, he published this one from January 2000 through the end of 2019. And we have put up all the episodes that Glenn could find and that I could scrounge around uh, from the internet and, and put them all online. Uh, some of them are transcripts only because the audio is lost, and some of them are audio with transcripts and some of them are audio only and we're going to uh do the transcription service we also have uh amateur radio newsline it's a week another weekly audio uh news bulletin of interest radio amateurs been around since September 1977, still being published uh, every week. And I have found um, as many episodes as possible. We have um, 2012 through current um, for Newsline. I'm trying to find lost episodes. If you have any episodes from 1977 to 2011, in any format, I don't care if it's digital, I don't care if it's cassette tape or reel to reel. Um, I would like them so that we can uh, get those those digitized. I tell you something I'm working on now. I mean, literally right now in another window, uh, it's working. The Rat Pack presentation archive. Um, your group has done a great job at at. Um, saving its uh saving talks and presentations and powerpoints and things and uh, putting them up, up on youtube and currently right now in another window it is downloading all those things from from youtube and it is moving them to uh uh get them into the dlark archive after that automated part is done then i'm going to go in and add in uh, the the PowerPoints or the the PDFs or whatever and 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 link them in so that that they're they're uh, all there as well so that it will all all be in one place. The thing I, I I've said about YouTube, I mean, I love that your group has put the stuff up on on YouTube. Um, it also had it on Vimeo, had it on Vimeo, and I get I guess I gather that that your group decided to to stop paying for the Vimeo account and then. All those article, all those uh, videos are no longer on Vimeo, but they're still on YouTube. Well, YouTube can take your videos down for any reason or for no reason at all, and and then then they're not available to the world anymore. So by archiving them in uh, in DLARC, then they will be somewhere a little more safe. I feel like I've been talking for a long time. I could show off more things, but um, I I think I want to stop it at this point and uh, see if people have any any questions uh, specific to this, and uh, we can kind of I don't know go from there and and. Uh... Uh, 
I'm going to put my video on there. Uh, do we have any questions? How are we doing in the chat there, Barry? Marty has a question, Marty Wall. He said he saw QST on your title periodicals page. How do you deal with the copyright restrictions that say the content cannot be posted to websites? Same question for published books. That is an excellent question. Um, for, for QST, uh, we, we have um, pre-19. So uh, the, 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 the copyright is complicated, and I'm not a lawyer. So we'll start, start with that. Um, QST, we have pre-1964 available. Actually, the, the number you see here is, is not accurate. I'm logged into my admin account. Uh, but we have, I, I think it's like 400 uh, issues pre-1964 um, because they are in the public domain. So that's how we deal with that. They're in the public domain. We can we can put them online. Um, if an organization gives permission, for instance, say today the AWRL contacted me and said put them all online, then that's easy too. Uh, or if a if a if a group ham radio group says you know please put our newsletters online, then we, then we we deal with that. For now, I will show you. My, I'm still screen sharing, right? You guys can still see my yes, yes. Okay, um, so I'll show you the DLARC lending library. The Internet Archive uses controlled digital lending, which is like a library. Uh, if we have a copy of a book, we scan it, and then we make a copy of the book available online. Um, and you can borrow it. You can view it for a time, and when you're done with it, it goes back and it's available for other people to look at. Uh, that's how we deal with the, the copyright situation. So here we've got about 1900 books, which are available. Uh, in, uh, it's actually, this is books and, and, and magazine issues that we've scanned that are in the, the DLARC lending library. So for instance, uh, let's say you wanted to read uh, 101 easy ham radio projects which was a book from 1968. You can look at it. You can look at the cover, look at the table of contents, and then it's like, oh, well, you can't work. But okay, if you have a, a, a uh, internet archive account, which is free, free library card, um, you can borrow it. And now you are welcome to read the book uh, for... <laughs> Come on, you can do it. Uh, anyway, now you can you can read the book and uh, uh, view it on your screen and and um, learn everything you want for it. And when you're done, you return it. Or if you don't return it after a while, it'll realize you're not, you're not there anymore. Um, and so that's that's how we deal with the the copyright issue. Either we we get permission or we do. Uh, control digital lending. Hope that answers your question. Any more questions? Another I have a question. Chairman, Chairman Florida, yeah. where's the funding coming from? The funding uh, is coming from uh, ARDC, uh, Amateur Radio Digital Communications, which is a private foundation uh, that gives grants to support amateur radio. And they gave Internet Archive a, a, a lot of money to make this project happen. Hey, Jim B., you want to come on and ask your question? Yes. Yes, I have a, I have a question. This is phenomenal. Sure. And it's uh, something that my club is very interested in when I, when I spoke to them about this uh, uh, talk that you were having. Mm -hmm. um, we have a thing called Coffee Talk. And a lot of our stuff, like uh, Rat Pack, is on YouTube. And mm -hmm. what you just mentioned is phenomenal to put it in your library. So, and they also have a, 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 a newspaper that they put out once a month. How would they get in touch with you to see if you're interested and if they could put it on your library, in your library? That's the best question I could possibly get. Um, you can email me 
uh, it, at k at archive.org. It's K A Y, uh, which is uh, my can first you put name. it in the chat? Sure. Uh, I probably Just can. I can copy if I can so find, I can I've, got, I've got a lot of windows open. Hold on. Let me see, see if I can find K at archive.org. Email me, okay. tell me what you've got, and I will would love to add it. And we can add, let's see, if I mean if if your group has we'll say a newsletter in PDF format, that's super easy. You send me the PDFs or I suck them down out of your website. I create a collection. I put them in there. Super easy. Uh, if you have uh, older publications that are only on paper, um, that's fine. You can lend them to us. We can um, put them in that magic scanner that I showed you. We'll get them scanned and uh, uh, we'll, we'll get them online. If it's audio, um, again, if it's digital, Easy peasy. If it's on tape or something, then I will digitize it. <laughs> so uh, we want to get it all. And I should have said this before. I should have said that at the, at the very beginning. I, I know this, a lot of this is ham radio and this is a ham radio group, but they have given me, the, the, it's called the Digital Library of Amateur Radio and Communications. And they give me kind of a lot of leeway to, to what goes in here. Um, it's not exclusively amateur radio. Uh, I am I'm putting in CB radio. Um, I'm putting in uh, shortwave listening, uh, 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 DXing stuff, uh, amateur television, pirate radio, um, pretty much anything that's not like commercial broadcast radio. Um, <laughs> so there's there's it's it, there's a lot of flexibility in, in the history of of communications uh, and, you know, it's, it's mostly ham radio, but you know, so you'll, you'll see CB books in here and you'll see uh, stuff about uh, uh, software broadcasting over radio um, uh, that, you know, experiments pe people tried like basic code and stuff. Oh, speaking of software, let me show you something cool. <clears throat> um, th this is not, <laughs> Sorry, this cough, man. Um, this is like a, a small speck of what's in, in DLARC, but it's something I'm, I'm, I'm working on. Uh, this is, I have uh, collections of amateur radio software for DOS, for Apple II, and for Atari computers. Um, well, we could probably add others later, but um, so this is various software. I mean, literally somebody sent me a bunch of floppy disks of software and I got them put into uh, into the system. Um, and for some of them, some of them, I mean, it doesn't, you can just you know, download the software and run it in your, in your old computer or whatever. Um, let me try to, here's the one I want. And for some of them, when it makes sense to do it, there is an emulator and you can use this old software right in your web browser so here's an amateur radio repeater directory on floppy disk from 1994. And um, you can just use the software like you were using an old computer. So you can literally test the software from 1994. Um, right here in your web browser. Some of the software doesn't make sense, like uh, TNC software that you know requires a special, it expects a TNC and a, or, you know, a, a, a radio attached to it. That doesn't make sense in emulation. But um, my, my first love um, was the Atari computer. Uh, I, have, I have one behind me. Um, and uh, amateurs you know, back in the 80s, loved the Atari 800 computer because it was uh, really well uh, uh, insulated against, against RFI. Uh, there, was, there was like a huge metal plates in there and stuff to, to keep it from, from, from leaking RFI. So it didn't interfere with people's radios. So and I found, I found all the, all the Atari computer software that I could find uh, and put it in here. And again, um, some of them are in, uh, available in emulation. So you can just, you can try out the software without installing, without having an old computer or installing an emulator. So I don't know if you can hear the, hear the beeping there, but so yes, that's that. That makes me happy. Next question, please.
Well, I got a follow up question, sort of. I guess this one's sure. more for Dan. Uh, Dan, I have some people that might be interested in, in uh, watching this video that we're on right now. Are you recording it and will it be available in the uh, future? Yes, uh, this and uh, all of our va uh, videos are available. We make them that way. They're free to download, uh, free to use in clubs or whatever amateur events you got. That's what it's about. So, uh, yes, and it will be. this will be available Days Wednesday, no later than about Friday, and uh, it'll be on YouTube. Okay, YouTube, because I used to get, uh, uh, like he said, from Venmo, and I guess he, um, I just learned that you canceled that account and everything just goes to YouTube. That's correct? Actually, I, we put it on both. Uh, we still got, I, I put it on video, and then I also put it on YouTube. We went to YouTube because of the Japanese. The Japanese, uh, wanted the, the YouTube has this translator thing and the Japanese says that they, they asked me to do it on YouTube because they can then read what we're saying. So uh, we, and that was a good move for us. We've uh, ever since then, we've been very pleased to be on YouTube. Um, okay. Did, excellent. Yeah. Appreciate that. Thank you. And, yeah, and like I said, soon enough, uh, that it will also be at, at archive.org slash details slash slash rat pack. Yeah. Okay. Uh, Dan, you got yeah. a, Dan's got his hand up here. Yeah. Okay. First of all, what you're doing is a real good use of ARDC's money, and thank you. Um, how, how, what search engine can we use in DLARC, and or is it there a single search engine for all of the archive.org? Certainly. Okay. So within at the main DLARC uh, page, archive.org slash details slash DLARC. This is this is the the, the front the front door. Um, the, the way to search all of DLARC is to use uh, the search this collection thing. If you just do search this collection and it says metadata, then it's searching the 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 titles and the authors and the the kind of the main uh, the main information. And if you do text contents, then it will do uh, a full text search. Um, so that, that's that's the way to go. It's fun. Um, it's pretty pretty neat to uh, just go here and, and enter your call sign or your, your dad's call sign or your grandma's call sign and see what comes up. Um, right. At minimum, they'll, they'll probably be in an old call book or something. Um, uh, so that's I how you search that. Yeah, I saw on one of those diskettes Ooh. that you had the C source code for the post office protocol, mm -hmm. 1987 or 88. I could have used that. <laughs> um, <laughs> some of the some of the 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 weird, tiny weird things in here uh, are are incredible. One of the one of the things that I like. I mean, it, 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 as long as we're talking about searching, um, is. I'm trying to find all the theses, the theses and dissertations that have to do with amateur radio. Um, and I'm finding them, getting permission from the authors and putting them online. So, uh, you know, it, people have been writing PhD theses on various aspects of, of amateur radio, also master's theses, uh, dissertations. Um, so, you know, here's, here's one by uh, uh, Marshall Enzor, uh, he was a, a, a person who, um, in the early days of amateur radio, the ARRL was just like, hey, we want to, we want, how do we teach a lot of people Morse code in amateur radio? And he had an idea, and he, it was his thesis about it. Um, basically, he, he created a, a online, uh, online, on, on the air lessons. Um, amateur radio it was just like the i think it was at the very top of the am band and it was just like people could tune in uh regular people who didn't have special equipment could just tune in to, to using their their am radios and and learn morse code and they say that he teached uh you know taught um uh, uh more than ten thousand people morse code and they became ham become became hams because of marshall Enzor. there's an Enzor museum in in kansas um that i hope to go to one day you can see all of his original equipment i don't know if you can hear my dogs um i don't know how i got off on this tangent oh and also how do you search all of internet archive uh just go to archive.org um and then use the search and again you can search metadata or you can search 
the full text search. Um, and there, I mean, there's so much more at archive, uh, than, than ham radio. Uh, there's, you know, uh, um, television news archives and, and you can search the captions and there's a, a billion podcasts and, a, a you know, a, a, a hundred thousands of books and, and all sorts of things. It's, you could, you could lose a, a weekend, uh, looking at an archive. Okay. Robert, you got your hand up. You want to take the floor? Uh, yeah, back on the uh, question of uploading the videos, uh, you said you're still uploading to Vimeo? Yes, we are. I, well, first of all, I, I followed a link that I had saved from the Iowa Derecho uh, video uh, of last weekend, and it it was broken. It couldn't find the video. And then I did a search on Rat Pack, and I've only turned up one video, which is your uh, video of the, uh, some, uh, uh, I forget the name of it here. Oh, here it is, the QSO Today uh, Ham Expo, but I can't find any of the normal Rat Pack videos on there. Is there a link that you can uh, yeah. put yeah. in chat for us? I'll put in chat there for you. And I'll have, I have another, we have a committee, a planning committee, a, a very good one, I might add. And one of those people are the ones that post these things for us. I edit them and he posts them and I need to go and see how you do it on video because I haven't checked lately, but if they, everything should be there. Let me uh, get a link and I'll put it in chat here very shortly. Okay. Thank you. For now, now, YouTube is okay, but uh, if it's on Vimeo, that's nice too. Yeah, no problem. Uh, Barry, how are we doing in the chat? We're doing okay. Uh, let's see. Dale from Connecticut wants to know how is the text searchable? Is it OCR on the on the scans? Yes. That was easy. That's <laughs> everything in the chat. All right. Okay, I don't see more hands up. I don't see uh apparently we don't have any more uh questions from chat. Did you want right. to take the sure. All right. Um Great. A couple more things I'd, I'd just like to to, sh to show off since I'm showing things off. Um, so how to how, how you can upload anyone anyone can upload anything. Oops, that's the wrong window. Anyone can upload anything to Internet Archive. You create an account, you click upload, you can upload your files. Right. Say you have an audio file uh, uh, or a, a PDF, you can just upload it. Um, and then later you can email me at k at archive.org and say, hey, I have this thing, it, it should go in DLARC and I can put it in the right place. I can I can do that. Um, if there's someone who, if someone has dozens or hundreds or even thousands of, of, of items, um, it's probably easier for me to upload them than for you to upload them one at a time. Uh, I have I have fancy tools and command line uh, uh Feed, uh, functions and things. Um, so you can email me and, and sometimes people will send me stuff via Dropbox or something and then I, I can I can upload them. Um, in the case of the YouTube, again, I somebody's not muted. Um, case of YouTube, I have a, a script that can grab things out of, out of YouTube. Um, and sometimes people have write to me, patrons write to me and they, go, and they have specific collections that they, they would like made. And some, sometimes they make a whole lot of sense. Um, one gentleman has a group, his, his thing is amplitude modulation on HF. That's his, that's the thing he loves. And he asked for a collection and he sent me some, some starter stuff. And he has just been uploading, um, videos and articles and things just about this, this one niche topic. Um, and so now we have a nice little, um, window in, into that aspect of, of the hobby, um, we have within the DLARC lending library, someone else wrote to me and his thing was, uh, fiction, fiction books about ham radio. I'm like, that's a, I love that. I mean, I showed you the thousand books we have, but, um, his little niche he, he wanted, he wanted, uh, to find all the, the fiction books. So I created a collection for that, you know, and a lot of these are, are, are juvenile fiction and some of them are, are not they're grown-up books um so i created a collection for for fiction about ham radio and for um 
uh, citizens band and and ham radio um let's see let me show you some of the the stats i ran the the stats program today um we have currently in audio you know podcasts and and things um 8700 items totaling uh 237 days of of hammer radio related audio uh in videos we have about 4000 videos 106 days of video um and documents are um just documents like like not from magazines from uh we'll say newsletters and, and things we have uh, about a million pages of documents uh just related to, to ham radio plus another million of uh magazines and periodicals and and things that were that were published um some of those things <laughs> This is another little uh, niche category that I created called DLARC technical papers. Uh, if if something comes across my desk and I don't understand it at all, it goes in here. <laughs> I mean, um, I don't I don't claim to know everything uh, about anything, but when I see an article called "Effective Random Sampling on S Spectrum Sensing for Cognitive Radio Networks," like that's probably interesting to somebody. That's probably uh, perfect for the DLARC technical papers uh, category. So that goes in there. Um, oh, we didn't. I didn't talk about uh, uh, TAPR, the Tucson Amateur Packet Radio Group. It used to be called Tucson Amateur Packet Radio. Then they just changed their name to TAPR because I don't think they're they're exclusively packet radio anymore. This group has been doing. Uh, uh, meetings, uh, uh, conferences for more than 40 years. Uh, first, it was called the Computer Networking Conference, and then they changed it to Digital Communications Conference, and they still have conferences every year. And got the okay from them to put in um, everything they had, all the conference um, uh, talks, uh, PowerPoints, um, uh, articles, uh, videos when they had them. They are all here. We've got 40 years of talks, uh, presentations, uh, and papers about ham radio, all right here in one place and all full text searchable. Uh, TAPR also has a oh. newsletter called Packet Status Register. They've been publishing since 1992. We have every issue of that. And another conference, and this is not done yet. I'm still working on this. Uh, HamSci, which is a a, a, uh, a conference about uh, from, from the Ham Radio Science Citizen Investigation, uh, Ham Radio and Science. Uh, they have uh, an okay. annual conference, and I'm working on getting their talks into here as well, a lot of videos and stuff. This isn't done yet. It's still a little bit of a mess, but but I'm working on it. And just a warning to everybody: this is a rabbit hole. Once you go down it, you will be lost for hours, if not days. I mean, it even has the very first website that I programmed for my company on it to search. It's absolutely amazing and incredible. And you will lose yourself for hours. There's there's too much it's too much information. Um it's 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 really it's I mean, like right now I said there's about sixty five thousand items um and it's growing all the time and uh I, I tell you, I'm having a great time. I'm having a great time um, finding this stuff, talking to the community, getting the okay to, to add stuff. And and I want to add material that you have. So um, this is the part of the thing where I where I first I, I've shown you what we have, and now I I want I want more. I want it all. So if you have you or your group has created content, newsletters, uh, podcasts, um, even old log books, um, uh, videos, YouTube videos. I would like to get that included in the DLARC library. And you can email me at k at archive.org. Show me what you've got and I will ingest it and and get it added. At, at minimum, it's a backup uh, to your website or your YouTube channel. Um, and hopefully, you know, it will make more people uh, available, uh, more people uh, uh, interested and knowledgeable about the stuff you've created. Um, and yeah, I mean, like a minimum is a backup and more, I mean, it will be, it's, 
more searchable than YouTube once we have the you know the full text searching and the the the, the transcription and that sort of thing. So it's more useful than than some of the other things. And then you're part you're part of this this uh, huge impressive library. So if if you have content that you've created, um, please reach out. Let me know. And also, if you have content that you haven't created, uh, but you want to donate, uh, we can take that too. Um, people have literally donated bookshelves of hammered ear books that they don't need anymore. Uh, they or they, you know, they don't want to uh, burden their heirs with when they die. Or in a couple of cases, um, people have died, and the the family contacts me and like, you know, I have my my dad's ham radio books. Do you want them? Like, yes. And it's a kind of a great legacy to be able to to take a person's book, um, ingest them all. We scan them, we keep them, and then we make them available via controlled digital lending. Uh, so that that's that's what I'm doing. That's what I'm up to. That's the digital library of amateur radio and communications. Uh, that's, that's my that's my spiel. Um, I want you to use it, and I hope that you, if you have something, you can contribute to it. Um, let your clubs know about it. I I want to um, get. I want all the newsletters. I want all the club newsletters. Um, the, there's so many amateur radio clubs, as you know, I mean, there, there, there are many that are regional, uh, all over the world. And there are many that are cl clubs that are specific to specific topics. You know, we have a newsletter from a, a club that that's, that's all about, uh, CW, you know, Morse code, that's their thing. Great. Um, we have another, like I said, the, the, the amateur television, uh, another uh, group, the, the Quarter Century Wireless Association, has has uh, um, uh, uploaded a a selection of their newsletters. Um, so you know, there's the regional ones, and then there's the topic specific ones, and um, they are all important part of the community. And uh, I'd like to get them all uh, available in this library so that they're they're out there. Any more questions? I have put the the links to. Uh, the, that I have currently to all the rap hacks and stuff in the chat. Uh, if you want to put the link to your site there in chat, that would help out also there, okay? Uh, archive.org slash details slash DLARC. That's the, that's the front door. If you have any questions, comments, concerns, complaints, uh, I am K at archive.org. All right. Yes, this has been a great presentation. Thank you. Okay. Um, looking around, are there any more questions out there? We're good in chat. Okay. Over we'll for comments. Any comments out there? Hearing none. Okay. Uh, okay, I'm assuming you're going to send me your slides after you're done here. I didn't create slides. This was this was all. Oh, that's this, okay. Well, well <laughs> this no this problem. was all, uh, all. This is all off the top of my head, and uh, not a problem. So, not a problem. Live We're, and in person. Say again, but, Barry. Live and in living color. That's right. Yeah, live and in and living color. Yep. Nobody needs PowerPoint. <laughs> Wing it. <laughs> okay. Well. Yeah. I, I, are are you a librarian, Kay? Um, no, I'm an archivist. I'm entirely okay. self-taught. I'm, I'm an I'm I'm entirely self-taught. Um, if it, the my 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 silly little backstory is my uh, I have uh, been archiving. Uh, in, I've been doing interviews and archiving information about early microcomputers, especially the Atari eight bits, for more than a decade. Um, and in doing that, uh, I have, you know, I've done more than 400 interviews with people who who did things with the the early microcomputer world, Ataris and Apple IIs and Commodores and that sort of thing. And many of them had stuff. After I interviewed them, like you know, they, had, they had source code or they had software, or they had whatever. And so I've been using Internet Archive for a long time in order to. Uh, to preserve this stuff, uh, get it get it scanned, get it online, make it available, and that's how I learned to uh, be a archivist and learn to use Internet Archive and learn the tools um, to to do it. And then, so when I saw this this opportunity to uh, 
do do basically the same thing, but for amateur radio, I'm like, that sounds like fun. So, yeah. Well, as valuable as this is for us that are still living, future generations are going to just be overwhelmed. And, uh, and they'll devise ever more interesting ways to uh, search and combine and put things together to come up with new things. Absolutely. As yeah. But, but only if it's, it, it's only, it's, yeah, it's only useful to them if it gets preserved now. The, the amount of stuff that I have, I've reached out to people and think, Hey, do you have this, you know, this radio show or, this magazine, like, no, we don't have it anymore. It wasn't saved. It was, it's gone, you know? So now is kind of the time. Now is the opportunity to, to scan the stuff, to digitize it, to archive it um, while, while it still exists. Because otherwise it won't be available to people in the future. Have you, uh, have you been contacted or have you contacted QS, QSO today? They have the ham fest, but they do year round. Oh, yes. Yes. Um, I, we are archiving their podcast. We are archiving their, their talks uh, from the YouTube channel. I gave a talk at QSO today, uh, just the other day. Okay. Yeah. Uh, the, the, with regard to archive.org, is anybody in touch with the, um, the, the real U.S. archives? I mean, the Library of Congress would love to be involved in this, and, thus, and I expect they already are. Um, the Internet Archive is is a member of of the Internet Archive organization. You know, I am, but a, a lowly uh, a pawn. Um, so, um, so I don't always have the 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 full picture of things. But um, Internet Archive is a library. It's a member of many library associations, ALA and, 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 and other library groups. Um, and I believe they are involved. They have, they have done things with library of Congress and, and that sort of thing. Um, so as far as, as this, I have not talked to anybody from the library of Congress yet, but, uh, I'm here and we'll, we'll get to that. One step. Well, congr congratulations. And thank you. Thank you. Yes. Okay. We're getting up to the top of the hour. There was, are any more questions out there? All right. Well, if you have questions later, kay at archive.org. That's where I will be. Thank you. I've, I've enjoyed talking to you all. I've enjoyed your questions. Um, this has been a blast. And uh, 